Okay, you had a chance to work the practice problem, so let's go ahead and check your work. So 13, calculate the increase in temperature. So an increase is a change in temperature, and we're going to be solving using the equation Q equals mc delta t. So let's find the rest of these variables in the equation. So our Q is going to be the heat transferred, and so we can see here absorbed 720 kilojoules. So 720, but wait, it's kilojoules. We want it to be in joules so our units are consistent. So just like one kilometer is a thousand meters, one kilojoule is a thousand joules. So we can just convert this to 720,000 joules. Okay, And the mass that we're working with here is given to us. It's five kilograms. And we're going to multiply that, multiply that, times the specific heat, or the C, which is, again, given to us. It's 2,400 joules kilogram degrees Celsius times delta T. So <clears throat> now we just have to solve for our delta T here. So we're going to divide both sides of the equation by this. 5 kilograms times 2,400. And we'll do the same thing over here. Of course, over here, all of that just cancels out. Here, we've got to do the numbers, but we can look at the units first. So kilograms over kilograms, so cross those out. And the joules up here cancels joules down here. So all we're left with is degrees Celsius. That's in the numerator here, or sorry, denominator here. So it's going to be in the numerator, so we're dividing by it. So we can come over to the calculator here and punch in. This turns on, on calculator. 720,000 divided by, and here's where we have to be careful, make sure that we're using parentheses in our order of operations, 2400. And that's going to give us our answer. So 60 degrees Celsius is going to be our temperature change. Yay. All right, on to number 14. So it says it takes 8,360 joules of heat energy. So it gives us Q right away. So in Q equals MC delta T. So Q, 8,000, whoopsie, 8,000, let's get back, there we go, 8,360 joules, okay? And our mass is given to us, two kilograms of water. C, we don't get yet, but we do get the one degree Celsius of temperature change. So we got to go ahead and solve here for C. So we're going to divide both sides of the equation by so 2 kilograms, 1 degree Celsius. Same thing over here, 2 kilograms and 1 degree C. Okay. So over here, this all cancels out and we're left solving for C. So C, specific heat capacity of water, is 8,360 divided by 2 times 1. So I'll do that over here on my calculator. <clears throat> 8. Wake up, calculator, from your slumber. 8,360 divided by 2 times 1 equals 4,180. Okay, so 4,180. And we'll check our units. This is consistent joules on top and kilograms degrees Celsius. Okay, so that's a value that you'll become familiar with. The specific heat capacity of water. So now we got to use that in uh, solving parts A, B, and C here. So let's go ahead and do that now. So raising the temperature of four kilograms of water, we're just going to substitute these masses and these delta T's into our equation here. So Q, oops, Q equals, and so for part A, we've got four kilograms and one degree C. And of course, what we just calculated, 4,180 joules per kilogram degrees C. Okay, so 4 times 1 times 4, 180. So 4, 4 times 4,180. 
80 equals 16, 720. Okay. And again, we'll check our units. Kilograms, cross out. Degrees C, cross out. We're left with joules. And that's what we should have because it's the question is asking us how much heat energy. So we check back here. Joules is our unit for heat energy. So it's always a good idea just to double check. So we'll go through these B and C. Four kilograms. Now five degrees C. So if you're clever, you can see that the temperature change is five times as much. So it's going to be five times as much heat that needs to go in. So we can actually just come over here and we can take 16, 7, 20 times 5, okay, 8, 3, 6, 0. So just to make sure that's the same as if we do 4 times 5 times 4, 1, 8, 0, the long way, okay. So that's 8,300, 6. So here's that, 83,600 units of same. And lastly, if we come down to part C, so now we've got double the mass and we've doubled the temperature again. So we've gone double, double, that means we're going to be four times the size of this one, but to avoid making things complicated, we'll just plug it back in. So here we go, eight kilograms times 10 degrees Celsius times 4,180 gives us 334,400. 334, 400 joules, okay? There we go. Okay, more of the same in 15. So here we go. In A, we've got 0 0.5 kilograms of water and our temperature change right there. So we're, it's asking us, calculate the amount of energy. That's another way of saying calculate Q. So it equals 0 0.5 kg point? Point. Kg times the C, in this case, water is right here. So 4,180, that's what you should have gotten from last problem. And our delta T, in this case, we've got to calculate it here. We're going to do the final temperature minus the initial temperature. So 58 degrees minus 18 degrees C. Okay, so <clears throat> 0 0.5 Kg times there, a little mental math, times 40 degrees C. Okay, so let's punch that in on the calculator. 0. 0.5 times 4180 0 times 40 gives us 83,600. Okay, sounds familiar from last question. 83,600. And again, just checking through the units, kilograms, kilograms. Degree C, degree C, so we're left with joules, 83.6 joules. And then we check back in the question, it says calculate the amount of energy, and we've got energy units, joules, so we're good there. Okay, so part B now, come to part B, it says, is, again, we're still calculating the amount of energy, so we've got Q again, and now we've got a 0 0.9.95, kg saucepan, it's made of steel, so different materials have different specific heats. So, but given to us right here is 500, so times 500. Notice it, that it's significantly smaller than the specific heat capacity of water, which has an unusually high specific heat capacity. And then we've, again, got to calculate the temperature change using these two numbers. So the final temperature, 198, minus the initial temperature, 18. <clears throat> so 0 0.5 times 500 times 180 degrees C. Okay, so let's go ahead and calculate. A little plug and chug. 0 0.95 times 500 times 180 is 8,000. 550, sorry, 85,500. Again, joules because Celsius cancels and kilograms cancels, and all we're left with is our joules here. Again, energy, so we're good.
What that means is if you compare these two answers in B and A, if you look at B, a heavier saucepan, almost twice the weight of the water, a comparable amount of energy causes the saucepan to heat up 180 degrees compared to a 40 degree change in half as much water. So that reflects the fact that this value here for water is so much bigger than for metal. In other words, it's easier to heat up metal than it is to change the temperature of water. All right. All right, and we're back here to 16. A well-insulated kettle contains, so here's our mass, water at a temperature of 20 degrees. It's going to be heated to 100, so there's our initial and final temperatures. This time, not really important for us. The question is asking how much energy, in other words, the Q. So let's go ahead and calculate. So Q equals M, 1.2, 1.2 kgs of water. That's also the same as 1.2 liters of water. One gram per milliliter is the density of water. So we'll go ahead and remember 4,180 is the specific heat capacity of water. And our temperature change, we went from, so here's our final temperature, 100 degrees C minus 20 degrees C, so 80 degrees. So let's go ahead and calculate that. So we've got 1.2 times 4180 times 1, oops, we'll just times it by 80. Let's save ourselves the step. Okay, 401. So that equals 401,280. And again, I'm being redundant here, but our degrees are canceling, our kilograms are canceling, we're left with joules. And again, we check back. We've got energy in the question and energy in the answer. Uh, this is not so important for the question. That's it. Okay, number 17. Hopefully these are getting easy for you by now, and you can see that we just plug and chug away with our formula Q equals MC delta T. So we've got two kilograms of water, two kilograms of water. You have memorized, burned into your brain already, the joules kilogram degrees Celsius, specific heat capacity of water, and it tells us the temperature rises by 10 degrees, so 10 degrees Celsius. Okay, so two times 4180 times 10 equals 83,600, okay? So we'll round that to 84,000. <clears throat> Jewels, there we go. All right, last one here. So we've got a student supplying a one kilogram block of copper with 5,000 joules of energy from a heater, and we're given the specific heat capacity. It tells us that the temperature went from 20 to 29 degrees Celsius, and then it asks us to comment on the temperature rise. Is it what you expected? Well, how do you know what to expect? Well, we have a formula that tells us exactly what to expect. Q equals MC delta T, your favorite formula. So Q, it tells us he put in or she put in 5,000 joules of energy from the electric heater. We've got a 1 kg block. It told us the specific heat capacity, 380 joules per kilogram degrees Celsius. And well, this is what we're going to figure out. What do we expect the temperature to change, or how much do we expect it to change? So let's go ahead and calculate this. We're going to divide 5,000 by 1 times 380. Okay, so we divided that by 1 times 380, just like we did over here, 1 times 380. So all this junk crosses out. 1 times 380 over here. Don't forget my units. So kgs cross out, joules cross out. And we're left with 13 and change. Degree C is the change in temperature. So here, this means that we expect 13 degrees. We only get a change of 9 degrees. So is this what you expect? Well, no, it's not what you expect. You expected more. You need to then comment on 
well, why did we get less than you expected? And in fact, you'll probably need to be commenting on this with respect to the fuel lab that we'll be doing shortly, or you might have already done, in that if you've got a device heating, like, go red, a flame, I guess it's pink, and you've got some container being heated, like with maybe water in it, well, <clears throat> we're measuring the temperature change of the water. All right, here's my thermometer. We're measuring the temperature change of this water and assuming that all of the heat going in here came from here, but heat is also going to the environment. So we're not necessarily measuring all of the heat that was released not all of it makes it in there to actually change the temperature of the material. So you can talk about some reasons that that temperature, that heat rather, goes to other places. So heat transfer, conduction, convection, radiation, etc. Okay, that's it for today.